So here we are at the whiteboard and we are going to practice writing chromatic intervals. Let's start by forming a few augmented intervals above these given notes. Okay, now here's some intervallic labels down here. Um, in old fashioned people like me, they might write an X. An X means augmented to old people like me. This is augmented third, augmented seventh, augmented fourth augmented sixth, you might see new hip young people writing aug third, okay? So I think in your textbook it says augmented third, but you might, you probably have an old music theory teacher and a lot of them still write the X to represent augmented, so that's what I've done. Because I'm too old to change. There's gray hair sprouting from my skull. So we're going to write the notes above. Remember, this is an intervallic label. There are two components to this thing. There is the distance, which is the number, and this is the quality. So the distance is a third and the quality is, an, is augmented. Let's start with this one. Step one is to write the distance. A third above F is A. There it is. And step two is to figure out the quality. Now I know F to A right now, as it stands on the page, is a major third, and I know that because A is the third note of an F major scale. To make it augmented, I need to increase the space between the two notes. Now I can't change the note they gave me in the textbook, so I have to alter the note I wrote. So to increase the distance, if I add a sharp, those notes got farther apart, this is an augmented third. Let's go over here and do an augmented seventh. First, step one is to figure out the distance. What's a seventh above the note G? It's F, okay. And now I have to figure out the quality. I will start by figuring out what I just wrote. This is a minor seventh. I know that because the seventh note of a G major scale is supposed to be F sharp, and this is not an F sharp. It's a, it's a F natural, which is smaller. So this is a minor seventh right now. So not only do I need to increase this interval's sides to become a major, I then need to increase it again to become augmented, which is the quality. So if I just added a sharp, I would be writing a major seventh. I need an, one extra step upwards. I need that double sharp symbol. Now this is an augmented seventh. Augmented fourth. Remember, Fourths can only be perfect. There's no such thing as a major fourth or a minor fourth. It's just perfect fourth. So we'll start with the distance. A fourth above E is the note A. This is a perfect fourth. I know that because A is the subdominant of E. It's the fourth note. And to make it augmented, to do the right quality, I need to increase the space. So if I add one sharp, that will get one semitone bigger, and that is an augmented fourth. Remember, perfect fourths go immediately to augmented. And an augmented sixth. Start with the distance. One, two, three, four, five, six. F is a sixth above A. Now let's figure out, bef before I make it augmented, let's just analyze what did I write. F sharp is the is the naturally occurring sixth note of an A major scale. And this is not F sharp, this is F natural. So if this was F sharp, it would be a major sixth. This is F natural, that's smaller. So this is a minor sixth right now. So not only do I have to push it into major, I then have to increase it again to make it augmented. So if I put, if I put a sharp there, it would be a major sixth. If I put a double sharp there, it's an augmented sixth. And there's four augmented intervals. And now let's practice writing a handful of diminished intervals above the given note. Now again, I'm old fashioned and this tiny little degree sign to me means diminished. If you have a younger teacher or a new textbook, you might just see DIM5 as the intervallic label.
Okay, so these mean the same thing. And it's up to you which one you want to use. Your examiner will mark both right. I know because I've had students do both and, and they'll both be marked right. Your examiner knows what you're talking about. Uh, so it's up to you. I'm doing the old-fashioned labeling system. So a diminished fifth above G. Step one is to write a fifth above G. We're figuring out the distance. The fifth note of a G major scale is D. So this right now is a perfect fifth. Diminished means slightly smaller. Okay, so I have to reduce the distance between these two notes. I can't change the bottom note again because that was the given note. I'm going to alter the top note. And by writing a flat beside it, that sends this D down one semitone and the distance has shrunk and now this is a diminished fifth as it's supposed to be. A diminished eighth. What's an eighth above the note B? Obviously it's the next B up, tonic to tonic. Now how do I shrink this? It's diminished. I can write a flat again. B to B was a perfect eighth and now B natural to B flat. The space has been reduced, it's a diminished eighth. A diminished six now above the note A. Let's start by figuring out what the distance is. Six steps above A is an F. Now what is this right now? This is a minor sixth. I know that because F sharp uh, is the sixth note of A major. So A to F sharp would be a major sixth. This is smaller than that. It's A to F natural. That's a minor sixth. And now I need to make it even smaller. And I can do that with a flat. And then we have D to E. That's a second. How do I reduce that? That's a major second. I know that because E is the second note of a D major scale. How do I reduce its size? Add another flat. And now let's practice labeling some chromatic intervals and some intervals within the new key signatures for level six. So I've purposely written out some scary looking intervals so that we can do them together slowly. Let's start with this one. The easiest thing to do uh, is to just figure out the distance. One, two, three, it's a third, so you can start by writing the distance of your intervallic label. Now this is an E flat to an E double flat, okay? So let's attempt to calculate uh, using the key of E flat major, since E flat is the bottom note. When you are frightened, you can always cover stuff. So let's pretend that G flat doesn't exist. Or sorry, let's pretend that G double flat doesn't exist. This looks a lot nicer. I like this, now I'm happy. E flat to G, I know what that is. That's a major third, okay? So this is a major third. Now let's slowly put the other flats back in. If it was one flat, E flat to G flat, that's smaller than a major third. Now it's a minor third, that's not too bad and let's remove my hand fully, two flats. What's smaller than a minor third? A diminished third. So this is a diminished third. See how we did that? We saw something frightening. We tried to cover some stuff with our hand. E flat to G is a major third. E flat to G flat is a minor third. And then E flat to G double flat is a diminished third. So that's that. F sharp to C sharp. Now we're thinking in the key of F sharp major. That's one of our new key signatures. You could just cover the whole thing with your hand and think in F major and then put those back in if that's what you want to do. But I can think in F sharp major because I'm smart. I know that the fifth note of an F, ma F sharp major scale is C sharp. So C sharp is the naturally occurring dominant note of F sharp and the distance is a fifth and because this is the normal diatonic note that we would find in an F sharp uh, major scale, I know that that's a perfect fifth. Now over here, we've got D natural and D flat, okay? I definitely know that in a D flat major scale, we do not have D naturals, so something's off. Let's just look at the distance first. D to D is an eighth, 
So that's one part of the intervallic label taken care of. I suppose we'll cover it with our hands. D to D is a nice interval. I know that's a perfect fifth. Now, when I took my hand away and this flat got put back in, did the interval get bigger or smaller? The flat pulled that D down, so the space increased. What's bigger than a perfect? Augmented. This is an augmented eighth. And the last one over here, this one's really scary. We've got G double sharp going to E sharp, and there is definitely no scale called G double sharp major. What do we do when we're scared? We cover it with our hands. Let's start with the distance. G to E is a sixth. Let's figure out what is G to E. G to E is a nice interval. That's a major six because E is the sixth note of a G major scale. So this is major. Now let's, let's add the accidentals that I'm covering back in one at a time. Uh, I don't like that double sharp. Let's just add the uh, sharp. What's G to E sharp? What's bigger than a major sixth? Augmented. So right now it's an augmented sixth. And now the sh double sharp comes back in and that reduces its size by two semitones. So this is an augmented sixth. Two semitones up, it would shrink to back to a major and then it would shrink again to a minor. So this is a minor sixth. I'm gonna do that all over again so you see. This is a major sixth. If I add this sharp back in, it's bigger. Now it's an augmented sixth. If I add this back in, this gets bumped up twice. So it goes from augmented sixth, smaller to major sixth, smaller to minor sixth. This is a minor sixth. So what's the, what do you take away from what I just did? You have a hand, when you're frightened, cover stuff and figure it out just using the white notes and then add these back in one at a time to see how it's been mutated into a chromatic interval. And the last thing we are going to do today is learn how to change intervals into different intervals using enharmonic equivalents, even though they will sound the same. So let's say that your textbook presented you with these two intervals. And let's say the question says, change the bottom note enharmonically to create a new interval. That's what we're going to do. We're going to take this C flat and change it to its enharmonic equivalent and rewrite a new interval. And we are going to take this D double flat, or sorry, this D double sharp and change it into its enharmonic equivalent and label the new interval. Let's begin just by labeling the first interval. What interval is this? C flat to A flat. In the key of C flat major, the sixth note is A flat. So this is a major sixth. Now, let's alter the bottom note and change it to its enharmonic equivalent. What note on the piano looks a lot like C flat? B. B natural and C flat are the same note. So this is B natural, and we will keep the top note the same. Now, what interval is this? What interval is B natural to A flat? What's the new interval we've created? The seventh note of a B major scale is A sharp. This is A flat, so that's quite a lot smaller. B to A sharp would be a major seventh. B to A natural would be a minor seventh and B to A flat would be a diminished seventh. So if you were to play these two intervals on the piano, they would sound the same, but they are written differently on the staff using an enharmonic equivalent of the bottom note. Let's do the same thing with this one. First, we'll start out by figuring out what the label is. D double sharp to B. I'm frightened of double sharps, so let's worry about the distance first. It's a sixth, I know that for sure. And I will cover this with my hand. D to B 
is a major sixth because B is the normally occurring note in D and it got smaller twice. So if it had have gotten smaller once, it would have been minor, but because it got smaller twice, it's diminished. This is a diminished sixth. Now let's change the bottom note N harmonically and create a new interval. What's another name for D double sharp? There's a few. I could say E natural or F flat. I'm gonna go with E natural for this one because it's closer. And then we will rewrite the top note. E to B, that's a fine looking interval. I like that one. It's a, obviously a perfect fifth because B is the fifth note of an E major scale. So again, on the piano, these are the same notes, but on the staff, they're written differently because we changed this note using its enharmonic equivalent. We got a new spelling of the same pitch. And that is the interval lesson. You can go to the Classical Context website and go do the level six interval worksheet. It's in the level six category and it is full of chromatic intervals so that you can practice and get an excellent mark on your level six exam.